Hi guys, welcome to another video in this channel. Today I'm going to be showing you something really, really cool that got introduced a couple of versions ago into Blender, but it has been improved quite a bit in the past couple of versions. So this is Blender 3.6, and we're going to be taking a look at how to create this here. We're not going to be using the old particle system method, which uh, it's very, very cool, but not like as traditional as what we normally do in other softwares. We're going to be using the new geometry nodes, but don't worry, it's not going to be scary. I'm going to make it very, very simple for you. So let's go. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, I'm going to make these files available for you. So if you want to try this exercise, you can look them up in our Discord channel down here. And uh, yeah, let's start. Very well. So we're here inside of uh, Blender, of course. And the only thing that I have right here is a couple of area lights to make this thing look a little bit nicer. And we got all of the textures set up. I'm going to jump into just uh, material preview so that we don't have as much uh, like uh, performance issues. And um, the way this works is very simple. We're going to be using curves to generate a patch of hair that we're going to be able to edit in order to get the sort of effect that we want. So there's two ways to do this. I uh, actually split it, one of the hairs, so I actually just duplicated some of the faces from my main helmet geometry right here. And the reason why I want to do this is to make sure that when I place guides, they're not being placed in other areas. So let me show you real quick. Actually, let me isolate this one. So we got this piece right here. And uh, actually, in some of the tests that I did, this was not working perfectly fine. So I'm going to delete this faces on the very edge. I'm just going to delete faces. There we go. So we're left with this very flat elements right here. I might even, to be honest, nah, actually, that's fine. Let's keep it like this. So once we have this, once we have this surface, which is where we're going to create our curves, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to add a curve and it's this thing called empty hair. So the empty hair element, as you can see, it's going to be attached to our hair connection, which is this mesh right here. And this is where we're going to be able to start creating our elements. If we go over here to the modifier, you're going to see that we have a surface modifier, surface deform modifier. This is very important. It gets created when we place our curves. And this is where we're actually going to start creating our hairs. The way hair systems work in most softwares is you use curves and you groom these curves. You, you like comb them and move them the way you want. And then they serve as a reference to generate a lot of fibers at render time. So I'm going to select the curves option right here, and I'm going to go to tab and we're going to go to not edit mode, both uh, sculpt mode. So we're going to go to sculpt mode. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this density brush right here to add elements. And you can see right there when I start adding, I'm going to start adding little dots or little lines all across the surface. Now, this depends on how dense or not you want your, your hair system to be. Some people I've seen, they work with very low like uh, points to, to get like a nicer uh, groom. Some people like to work with higher densities. In this case, I'm going to change my count max to 10. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on symmetry so that when I start laying them out, they get as symmetrical as possible. And as you can see, we're going to start laying them out along this whole surface right here. I don't need them to be perfectly uniform because I want to have this sort of like natural random look to them. So I'm just going to start adding some of this guides right here all the way to the back of the element. There we go. So now that we have this, we can start modifying these curves to indicate the groom how we want it to behave. In this particular case, I'm going to use the uh, grow shrink element. I'm going to go to my uh, side view, this one, number three. I'm going to change the element here from sphere to projected so that we get both sides very uniformly. So now, as you can see, I can start pushing all of these elements right here and generating the crest of our element. Let's go out of uh, isolation mode so that we can actually see the size of how how big we want these things to be. Remember in Blender, every time you use the letter F, that's the size of the brush. So we can use this one. I can press Control in this case to bring the curves back. And that way, as you can see, I can start grooming all of these curves to create a very nice clean crest in this Spartan helmet. If you want to go like a little bit fancier, like a little point there on the end, go for it. All of these hair curves are going to be used to generate the fibers that we're going to eventually use for our render. So let's say something like that, and, and we're happy with them. Now, the cool thing about these curves is that we can move them around. So for instance, if I use the comb brush, comb, bro, comb brush, <laughs> sorry, English is hard. If I use the comb brush to do this, I can start, as you can see, moving them around and generating a more of a fluffy effect, especially on the on the outer edges right here. So the brushes work in, in a camera-based like projection. That's why we have this sort of like projected view right here. So make sure to move your camera around to try to get what you want. You can also change this to sphere. So as you can see, there's like a little bit of a fall off, which I actually like for this particular case. And I'm just going to start like modifying and moving all of these things around. 
Now, there's one thing I did change on the curves that I haven't mentioned before, and that is if we go to the render settings, I am using Cyclos GPU Compute, and down here on the curves option, I change the basic strand option that they have by default to this one called strip. And strip will look a little bit more like, a, like an actual like element. Let's smooth this out. We also have a smooth brush right here, this one. So we can smooth the, the curves uh, so that we get a, a, like a softer, cleaner effect. There we go. Especially those ones, we're just going to smooth them out. And that's it. Looks good. It's looking nice. At any point, again, you can just go back here and move this around. There is a shortcut. I don't use it that often. It's Control and Tab, which you can switch between modes. So if we go back to uh, Object Mode, you can see that this is the object that we have here on our element. Actually, that was Edit Mode. Let's go to Object Mode. There we go. So that's the, the curves that we're seeing right now here on the element. Now we need to start adding the modifiers, the geometry nodes modifiers that are going to populate this area with actual hair. And we're going to start changing them. So the way I like to do this is we go here to the side and I'm going to add in a vertical split. And on this split, I'm going to change the view to this option called the asset browser. There we go. And by default, as you can see, we're on the hair asset browser. And there's a lot of things that we can do with hair. We're going to be exploring some of them real quick right here. So the first one that we want is we want to generate the actual hair that's going to be in between all of these fibers. Because remember, these curves that we have right here, they're the guide points to populate the rest of the element. If we want this very nice, fluffy hair for the whole thing, we need a lot more hairs. And I don't want to do that with curves. I want to do them with actual, like, interpolated hair. So if we go here to generation, uh, yeah, it's this one. Generate hair no sorry uh interpolate hair curves there we go so the only thing you need to do is drag and drop this into the element and what's going to happen is it's going to like repopulate or it should repopulate what the hell happened there well my bad just the one little thing that we forgot here so yes we do use this interpolate hair but we're going to sample this surface and we're going to tell it to use the same hair connection object there we go. So now it's, it knows that it needs to go into that geometry and it's going to interpolate, as you can see, a lot of new fibers into that section right there. You can change the density of the fibers. For instance, right now we have a density of uh, 10. We can go to, I don't know, like 1,000. And you're going to see this becomes way, way, way heavier, which is a little bit closer to what we want, right? Like we don't want to have like a, like a really thin hair effect. We want to have something a little bit more intense. Now, one thing that you can do for performance sake is change this viewport amount to something like, I don't know, like 0.2. That way, it's not going to look as like heavy here on the viewport, even like 0.1. But when we render, we're going to have a very big density. So this one right here looks good. Now, uh, one of the things that I want to add here is I want to add a utility node, sorry, right node, which is set hair profile. And this, as you can see, is going to allow me to get a smoother effect on the hair on the top. And not only that, here on the modifiers, this is the surface the form. We can change the radius if we want like a really thick hair. That's like a force really, really, really thick or really thin hair. We're going to go for something a little bit smaller. What's the correct size for a hair? I'm no hair specialist, but if we go to Google, we can see that horse hair, for instance, which is what I would expect them to be using, not like normal hair, uh, 75 to 280 microns in the like in, in range, which is 0 0.004 inches. That's very, very, very small, right? So let me see if I can get like an actual like millimeters. Let's say uh, one... 150 microns to millimeters and we're going to get something like there we go 0. 0.15 millimeters so over here i'm just going to say 0. 0.15 millimeters and that will give me like the exact size but as you can see this is way 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 too small so i'm going to go for something like 0. 0.015 which i think is going to be a little bit better maybe that's a little bit too much 0. 0. 0.0015 and there we go that's nice 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 that looks better cool so we're going to very quickly go to the shading tab. We're going to select our hair and we're going to assign a new material to that hair. We're going to delete the principal BSDF and we're going to assign a new principal hair BSDF. And by doing that here into the surface volume, if we go, of course, to um, material preview or in this case, yeah, there we go, material preview, we're going to be able to see this thing right here. Again, I think it's a little bit too thin for what we're going for. So 0 0.015 sounds or looks a little bit better. There we go. Now, one thing that we can do here, and this is very cool, each individual element that we have on the hair has information. So we can actually extract the information and we can use a node called the curve ID curve info. There we go. So this curves info knows what each specific curve like position or, or number is. And one of the things that we can do is we could, for instance, use a ramp, which is what I had on the initial um, example. I'm going to use a ramp that's going to go into the color. Right now it's a flat color. But if we use, I'm going to push this right here. If we use the intercept right here, you can see that it knows 
that the bottom part of the strand is going to be closer to this black color and the other one's going to be closer to this one, to the upper color. So this one, this black color, I'm not going to make it as dark, but I'm going to make it like a dark red. And this one's going to be like a very nice clean red. Here we can change the interpolation to a B spline, so it's a little bit softer. There we go. Actually, B spline is not working very nicely. That's just an ease option. There we go. That's a little bit better. And that way we can control this. You can even go to this like upper section. So I'm going to go for like a slightly darker red. And we can add another point, move this point forward, and change that to a slightly lighter effect. Let's make sure that all of this is set to ease. And let's go to render to make sure we get. There we go. Look at that. So we get this very nice gradient going from like a dark color to a soft color right there. Let's go back to our layout mode. We now have the material. And what I want to do here is I actually want to modify a little bit of the curves because you can see they're kind of like overlapping each other. So we can go back here to the curve information, press control and tab to go into sculpt mode. And what I want to do is I just want to like bring these guys back together because I think this like fluffy effect is it's generating some unwanted effects. You can see this line right there, for instance, is crossing a into a different like uh, part, and I don't like that. I'm also gonna use my uh, smooth, and let's smooth the elements. Now, this is not it, right? One of the things that we can do, let's go to render here. One of the things that we can do is we can start playing around with, um, what's the word, with more modifiers to get an even better result here on the hair. So if we go here to the deformation tab, you can see we have things such as blend, displace, freeze is very important. So I'm going to go again to my, my modifier stack. Uh, very important, the surface deform should always be at the very bottom. And we're going to grab the first one, or first hair curves, and we're just going to add it to the element. Uh, right now I got the denoiser turned on, that's why it looks a little bit blurry. But if we go here and uh, we start increasing the distance, for instance, on the frizz, you can see how the whole thing becomes a lot, lot, lot noisier. Now keep in mind that I am using viewport display right now, that's why it's not looking perfect. But on the render it's going to look very, very fine. And you can see here that this frizz is looking quite nice. Actually, let me go real quick and get rid of the denoiser. There we go. So the frizz is looking quite, quite nice. Let's go back to solid mode so that we can appreciate a little bit more what the frizz is doing. Now, if we go to the modifiers, you're going to see that we have this shape, which is like the influence of the frizz. Right now, it's influencing the tip a little bit more than the base. So if we push this up, it's going to influence the tip more. And if we bring it down, it's going to influence the whole length of the element. Distance, as we've uh, already seen here, it's uh, something that we can change on the intensity pretty much, like the intensity of the phrase. If you want like a very puffy or less puffy effect, this is a good uh, thing to do. You can change the seat to get a slightly different or more random effect. And you can preserve length. This is important if you don't want things to be like increasing in size too much. Preserve length is an excellent option. Another thing that's very, very cool uh, or that we can use is clumping. So if we go here to guides, we can use this clump hair curves because usually hair due to the oils and everything, it tends to clump together. This is something that I touch about uh, when we talk about action instead of Maya. So I'm going to drop this one in here and you're going to get a very weird effect. Actually, that looks kind of kind of cool, but that's not what we want. I'm going to change this existing guide map on the clump hairs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start increasing the guide distance. And as you can see, as I increase the guide distance, we're going to get more clumping happening in the um, in the initial factors. It's creating new guides to generate this sort of like clumping effect. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. We can use this guide mask to again like blur this out or get like less or more clumps. So I think I'm gonna go. I kind of like having a lot of clumps, but maybe not too many. Something like that looks better. We can change the tip spread to to make the tip like a little bit like softer on the very top right there. So we can make it smaller or bigger depending on how we want the clumps to behave. And uh, we can use again a lot of things. This this is one of the things that I really like about this new system of uh, of hair grooms, and that's the fact that we can play around and and find like specific setups that are gonna give us a very very nice effect. We can like diminish here the factor, which is kind of like the intensity of the effect, um, or we can increase it to have like a really really strong effect. Uh, finally, there's another one that I really like, which is the cut hair. Where is it? Uh, utility, generation, deformation, there's one that, this one, trim hair curves. So we can add the trim hair curves, and as you can see right now, it's trimming everything. We don't want that, of course, but if we go here to the three, uh, we can do scale uniform, and we can play around with the length factor. And what this will do is it will trim the, the hairs down, right, to a smaller effect, or increase them, as you can see right here. And we can do this random offset so that not every single element, not every single hair is cut in the exact same way. 
So it's a really, really cool way to add, you know, a little bit more distribution. And that's it. Now, if we go to render mode, you can see that we got this very, very cool, like spiky looking effect for our Spartan helmet. So this is just a quick introduction of one of the things that you can do inside of uh, Blender with this new hair system. But as you can see, it's fairly easy to use. Just 15 minutes and you already got most of the stuff that you need to, to get this to work. Of course, there's more advanced stuff. If you're a geometry node user, you can actually get this into the geometry node steps, convert them into a, a other like geometry graphs and then add more modifiers and things like that. But as you can see, we get a very, very, very cool effect. Finally, I got my camera right here. We can just look for a cool shot right there. And I can go render, render image, wait for the samples to... There we go. Sorry, I, I forgot that the audio cuts when I'm trying to record and render at the same time. So yeah, then at this point, I just need to wait for the render to finish and we're going to be good to go. So that's it, my friends. If you like this video, make sure to leave us a like, share, make sure to subscribe. If you're not subscribed, we upload videos every day and we have a very huge and amazing Discord community. Also, if you guys want to learn a little bit more about Blender and just complete beginners, you just saw this thing and it looked cool to you. We have a premium course available down here. Make sure to check the link so that you can see what it's about. It's a very cool stylized weapon where I show you every single step of the way that's being used in AAA studios all around the world. So yeah, that's it for today, my friends. I'll see you in Discord, here in YouTube, and in all of our social medias. Thank you very much. And yeah, nothing else to say. Bye-bye.